Pastor Cozy. I'm excited to be here with you today. So we have had such an awesome month last month. We did drive-bys where you guys got these cool reflection packs. We did life group and laser tag. If you thought laser tag was fun last month, get ready for fortress laser tag this month. We did our first big worship gathering as an O oh Kids God family. And you know what? If you didn't make it to any of those things, that's okay. We're gonna do it all again this month in October. So we're really excited to see you next week at the O oh Kids family worship gathering, at life groups every week. We are just really excited for what God's doing in your heart and in O oh Kids as a whole. So. If you know me, which a lot of you do, you've known me a long time, you know that I love Halloween. I love it. I love to dress up. I have been Princess Poppy. I made this, by the way. I've been Princess Poppy. I've been a rainbow. This is from the Daddy Daughter Grants. I, I just love to dress up. I love that it's an excuse to put on sparkles and fun makeup and crowns and wigs and funny headbands. I even sometimes make silly shoes. I love to dress up. But you know, Halloween is also a really important time to have integrity. So integrity is being honest with your words and your actions. So, for example, like when I was your age, when some of the kids would like go so far ahead of their parents, they'd try and lose their parents and be so far ahead of them in the trick-or-treating houses that they were basically by themselves. Well, to have integrity, I knew that I was not someone that wanted to do that. I knew that God didn't want me to do that because he wants me to listen to my parents and respect them. And so I had to have integrity by saying no. God also made me to have a really crazy imagination. And so on Halloween, I have to have our integrity and be who God created me to be by saying no thank you to the haunted houses. So it's not just Halloween that we have to show integrity. It's actually every single day. And you know what? In our story today, Daniel and his friends had to show integrity too. And they were truthful with their whole lives. But before we get there, we're going to do some worship with Miss Carrie, and we're going to say our core truths. And I love our core truths because if you can't remember who you are or what truth is, we can always remember our core truths. So let's say them together. Today I declare that I am known and loved by God. Jesus is my friend. I am a unique part of God's story. My true identity is in Christ. I am following. I love seeing our core truths together. Well, I'm Miss Carrie, and I love David's words in Psalm 56, verse 10. He says, I trust in God. I praise his word. I trust in the Lord. I praise his word. David says the same thing over and over because that helps him remember what is true. Can you say that with me now? I trust in God. I praise his word. Let's say it one more time together. I trust, trust in God, God. I, I praise his word. Well, the first song we're gonna sing helps us remember that we can trust in the Lord no matter what, because he loves us and he's always faithful. So let's sing about that now. Here we go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And we're gonna leave.
reminded that we can trust in God no matter what. And we can be who God has made us to be when we're honest and when we're truthful. And even when we make mistakes and need to grow, we can become an even greater version of who God wants us to be. We can trust in God that he knows what is best and we can choose to follow his lead. Well, we have a new verse this month to learn and it goes like this. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. And that comes from Proverbs 10, 9. Would you learn it with us now? It goes like this. Whoever walks, whoever walks in integrity, in integrity, walks securely, walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out, will be found out. And that comes from Proverbs 10 verse 9. Proverbs 10, 9. Let's say it one more time together now. Whoever walks with integrity walks securely, but whoever takes the crooked path will be found out. Proverbs 10, 9. I love the reminder that that verse gives us that we can live without blame, that we can live an honest life. And I think we get to do that because God reminds us that his promises are always, always true and that he loves us and he's gonna take care of us no matter what. He will never fail us, whether we're having the best day or the worst day. Would you sing with us now? And as we sing this next song, this may be a song that you know hand motions too. So you can do those hand motions if you know them or I'm just going to do what I feel like I want to do in the moment. So I'm going to be praising God maybe with my hands or have my eyes closed because when we worship, we can also just do what we feel like we want to do and how we want to praise God. Let's sing together now. I count on one thing, the same God that never
pray with us now. And God, we thank you so much for the things that you say that are true, for the promises that you say to us each and every day. And God, that every single one of your promises come to pass. And God, we ask you right now that you would help us lead a life that is full of integrity, full of honesty, full of truth, full of life, full of love, because that is even what is best for us. And God, would you help us to follow your example in doing that? We love you so much. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's sing happy birthday to our friends that have birthdays this week. Here we go. Enjoy this awesome story about Daniel and his friends and how they lived with integrity. Oh, hey. Hello, planet Earth! It's me, Graham, professional astronaut, broadcasting live from outer space. You know, not a lot of people thought I would make it all the way to Saturn, but you know what? They were right. <laughs> it's just a costume. I'm still, I'm still on Earth. I love to dress up and pretend to be other people. Don't you? I mean, I love to dress up in costumes and wear scary makeup or funny masks. It's out of this world <laughs> because I'm an, because I'm an astronaut. Oh, but today we're talking about what it's like to live our lives without masks, without costumes. What it's like to live with integrity. Now, integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It's harder than it sounds to live with integrity. There's so many reasons to pretend to be someone you're not. I mean, you may want people to think you're funny. You may want your teachers to think that you're smart. E equals MC squared. The capital of Mongolia is Ulaanbaatar. A woodchuck can chuck 32 cords of wood. And you probably want your friends to think that you're cool. Cool kids still dress like this, right? See what I mean? It isn't always easy to just be true to who you are. In today's story, we'll learn about some guys who were under a lot of pressure to be like everybody else. We'll find out if they were able to stay true to who God made them to be. I'll be back in a moonit. Instead of a minute, it's moon it. Because I'm in space. <laughs> Maybe I should dress up as the clown again. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel was only a very young man when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered the land of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar made sure that God's people wouldn't rebel by taking Daniel and other young men from royal families in Judah and marching them back to Babylon with him. Will we ever see our home again? Daniel's friends were just as scared and confused as he was. Where will we live? What will he do to us? I sure hope the food is decent. Daniel tried to reassure them as the imposing city gates rose ahead. God will be with us, whatever happens. The king chose the brightest and best young men from Judah and ordered that they receive special training. After three years, you will get to be very important and serve me. The chief official Ashpenaz took charge of Daniel and his friends. <laughs> tut tut, those wishy-washy Hebrew names just won't do. You need new ones. New what? <laughs> names. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel, we'll call you Belteshazzar. And you three will be Shadrach. 
Meshach and Abednego. <laughs> Are those names or is he just sneezing? You'll learn our language, of course. And all the Babylonian writings? <sighs> Daniel's heart sank as he realized what was happening. The king wanted Daniel and his friends to forget they were God's people. He wanted them to become Babylonians. But Abednego was worried about something else. Hey, I, I'm about to starve. Any way we can get a bite to eat? <laughs> right this way. Ashpen has led Daniel and his friends to a big table set with mouth-watering foods. Mmm, steak. Or those Babylonian buffalo bites. The cake's got at least nine layers. Only the best straight from the king's table. <sighs> oh, the food smelled delicious. But Daniel pulled his friends aside. Guys, if this food is from the king's table, that means it's been offered to false gods first. Uh-oh. Not good. Our new names and training are one thing, but if we eat this food, it's like we're saying we're okay with false gods. But we gotta eat something, man. We can ask for different food, simple stuff that hasn't been offered to the false gods. With that chocolate cake! A band that go! Okay, okay. Daniel and his friends turned back to Ashpenaz. They tried to ignore the delicious smells wafting from the table. Uh, this all looks great, but could we eat something that's not from the king's table? It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The king is my master. He's decided what you must eat and drink. What if you don't eat this and he sees you looking worse than the other young men? He might kill me. No matter what Daniel said, Ashpenaz was too fearful to listen. So Daniel approached the guard assigned to take care of them. Please, just test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. See how we look then. Hmm. Well, if Brussels sprouts are your thing. For 10 days, the guards gave Daniel and his friends nothing to eat but veggies and water. I could get into the habit of cabbage. I like broccoli, probably. Pa pass the peas, if you please. I just want a hamburger. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to say no to all those delicious foods the other young men got to eat. But at the end of 10 days, the guard called everybody out. Line them up. He strode past the other young men. Good, good. I can see you've been eating well. When the guard reached Daniel and his friends, he stopped in surprise. What? You've been eating rabbit food, but you look even better fed than the others. <laughs> Daniel smiled. God had helped them grow strong even without eating the food offered to false gods. Okay, fine. You can keep eating veggies and water. Rats. Thank you. God continued to give Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding as they studied, and at the end of their training, they were brought before the king. Let's see what you know. How many inches in a meter? 39.3701. Hmm. What do you call a group of porcupines? A uh, prickle. If it takes eight men ten hours to build a wall, how long would it take four men? No time at all, because the wall's already built. Hmm. How are you all so smart? The one true God gives us wisdom. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Anyhow, you're 10 times smarter than my other advisors. You get to be very important and serve me. Daniel and his friends eventually became the king's most trusted advisors. And even though they served the king of Babylon, they never stopped standing strong for the one true God in everything they said and did. Okay, so Daniel and his friends were in a really bad situation. They were taken from their homes and they were forced to be some king's servant. But even then, they chose to be true to themselves. They chose to live the way God wanted them to live. You see that kind of integrity a lot in the Bible. I mean, think of Jesus. He was always true to himself. Jesus could have gone along with the crowd, but instead he lived the way he knew was true, even when it meant giving up his life for you and me. So how can we be true with our lives? Well, it's great if you want people to think that you're fun or funny, but not if it means, say, hurting someone's feelings to get a laugh.
I have no idea how to make balloon animals. And being cool is cool, you know? But if you have to pretend to be something that you're not so people think that you're cool, that's not cool. Cool? What's another word for cool? So here's the one thing to remember today. Be truthful with your whole life. You can choose to be who God made you to be. I mean, to be honest and true in what you say and in what you do. Like I said before, it isn't always easy. So ask God for help. That's one small step for you and one giant leap for integrity. <laughs> Goodbye. I love the idea that we can be truthful with our whole lives. Daniel and his friends showed integrity by being truthful with their whole lives. And you know what? We can write about it now. If you've got an O Kids journal like this, then you can write about a time where maybe you didn't show integrity. You're also welcome to draw if you would like. And then when you're finished, maybe think about how you could have done it differently. Maybe showed integrity just like Daniel did. Awesome. And if you got a reflection pack for October, your activity for this week is a mask. So on one side, you can decorate it however you want, fun, jewels, glitter, whatever. And then on the, maybe not glitter, it's very messy. Uh, on the other side, you are going to write things that are true about you or true about how God says you are, what's true um, about who maybe God wants you to become. So for me, I put honest. I want, God has called me to be an honest person and I want to become even more honest. I think God made me generous and creative. And so this mask all month can be a reminder that yes, it's fun to dress up, but we actually want people to be able to see this stuff about us, what's really true, who we are, who God created us to be, and who he's called us to become. And you know what? We get to celebrate who God has made us to be on our next O oh Kids Family and Kids Worship Night. And that is coming up October 10th. I had so much fun with you guys on the first one. And I hope that you'll join us on this next one. We're gonna have glow sticks and the so-and-so show, which is so funny, and games and songs. And we're just gonna have the best time together and prizes, you don't wanna miss your prizes. We hope to see you there. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so fun. I had so much fun. We hope to see you guys there. We are just so excited for this month. There's so much fun things going on. And next week, we have a surprise for you on the video. Something is coming back, so you don't want to miss it. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.